You come into my store with gloves and a mask on, I'm going to have my hand on my gun. I mean, you can't get paid enough to do this, right? Oh, oh, um, he had no reaction time. In two tenths of a second on average, I could pull the trigger and break a shot. This is the most disappointing thing to see on the planet from human beings in this country. We have all the afforded opportunities to succeed, and we got young men throwing away their lives over what? Hookah smoke? This is the worst case scenario. Hey, what's going on guys? Mike Glover here on the Philcraft Survival Channel. We're doing a reacts in self-protection that takes us to LA. I feel like 90% of the videos we do takes you somewhere in California because that's where it seems either they have a good system of cameras that are integrated in the closed circuit or uh, they just have a lot of crime. I'm gonna go with a lot of crime. Uh, all these metropolitan areas, especially Los Angeles, are shitholes. You want to not be involved in uh, crime sprees. Don't live anywhere in a major city in California. Just putting that out there. I, I, I don't see crime sprees in Heber City, Utah. Not that I want more people here, but it's a great place to raise a family. So we're in LA and we're at a wonderful smoke shop. You know, when you got to get that hookah fix, you got to go to the smoke shop to get your, your uh, right here in the upper corner, the uh, skull shirt. Um, the skull, it's a tank top. It's not even a full shirt. Um, you got to go in here to get some of your, um, your bud for your hookah, um, or, or hookahs themselves. Cause they sell hookahs here as well. So here, what's fascinating about this security circumstances, you can see right here, there's bars on the windows. They have a walk up here and then they have a guy who's acting as the host, the, the, uh, cashier the security guard and probably customer service. I'm just thinking customer service rep. He's probably doing that as well. He happens to be on his cell phone, not paying any attention to situational awareness as per most people in the world who have a cell phone, right? He's not aware because he's, he's following uh, my Instagram and he's liking great posts on Mike.a.clever. That's just what's happening. And then he goes, Oh, can I help you? And so who do we have here? We have uh well, here you can't really differentiate between who's shady and who's not shady in a smoke shop. No offense to, I'm not stereotyping smoke shop customers because I know you, you you come from all walks of life. But these guys walk up in here and their posture is pretty normal, right? One guy's looking at the display because he's trying to figure out, hey, what color hookah do I want? Do I want a red or green for this weekend? Um, and everything looks pretty normal. One guy's got a mask on, the other guy doesn't. So no other indications of anything shady. And let's see how this unfolds. Okay, so first problem that we have. So these guys are taking up a position and posture that looks like a L-shaped ambush. You got one guy who deliberately came across the counter on this side. You have another guy with his arms behind his back who is wearing, I believe, flip-flops and long johns and polka dot uh, shorts. And then you have what appeared to be two guys who came in, we'll see here in a second, that have gloves on. Interesting. You come into my store with gloves and a mask on, I'm going to have my hand on my gun. Like... Why, why do you have gloves on? You better have a good reason for having gloves on. And then we'll deconflict. Like, oh, sorry, you have gloves on because you got burned. I, I get it. Like, it happens. But two dudes coming in after the fact, his posture changes. Now, here's what I'll give this guy kudos in, in real time as we work through this video because he's wearing a vest. He's been put in a very difficult situation. 
because he's probably getting paid minimum wage to guard cashier and do customer relations in a smoke shop in LA. I mean, you can't get paid enough to do this, right? So he takes up a certain posture. And what I don't like about overt security methods and wearing body armor, I'm signaling to the bad guys, hey, look at me. I'm somebody you could shoot in the chest because I'm wearing body armor and pay attention to me because I'm the first guy you need to take out when you need to get rid of security. And you can't check out anymore because you just took me out. Oh, so I was wrong. This guy doesn't. <laughs> this guy doesn't have gloves. It looked like he had gloves on because they had his face masked. And I, you know, maybe I stereotyped the blurb, but from the angle that it presented, it looked like uh, he was a black guy. Um, but he appears to be um, at least light skin or white. Uh, I, look, I don't care about race here, but uh, I'm just. I thought he had gloves. He doesn't have gloves. He has a blurbed head, no gloves. His buddy who came up behind him rolls up and has the pistol that he pulled out of his waistband a fraction of a second ago. And this dude is in a very serious predicament that's about to unfold. Oh, okay. We teach this in uh, Phil Craft training courses. I teach it in the Gunfighter Pistol. My next Gunfighter Pistol is sold out in San Bernardino. I'll be in Goldendale, Washington uh, next month. And then I'll be back in... Um, uh, Heber City and Spanish Fork, actually, but the local area a month after that. But we teach about reaction time. And as you could see right there, as that unfolded, um, he had no reaction time. So he points a gun in two tenths of a second on average, based on people's reaction time, I could pull the trigger and break a shot. What's fascinating about the situation is the guy goes for his gun immediately. He goes for his gun immediately. Just for the sake of TV, I'm going to recycle this. And I'm going to show this to you in real time as it's about to pop off. Here we go. Guy doesn't have gloves, walks up. He asks him a question. Looks like he's communicating. This guy pulls his gun right here. And he wants to have the one up because then he pulls the gun and then bam. Now, here you see him going for his pistol. So this kid is lucky, the security guard is lucky that he didn't get shot in the face because he's got a loaded firearm in his face that takes two tenths of a second to get shot in his face and he goes for his gun. Now, a lot of you can criticize this guy, but his actions right now probably saved his life because if these guys are brazen criminals, which the records distinctly show they are because two of the guys in this who I don't know specifically who they are, are wanted for murder. The other two guys got caught. One of them got rolled up at the hospital. But as he goes for his pistol, his hands on his pistol, and he's he's at a what we call decision point. We teach this at Philcraft Survival in my course called Decision Point. I will be dropping that course here in the near future at Philcraft HQ in Heber City, Utah. We will be teaching, I personally will be teaching Decision Point because it is a course developed around the cognitive and scripted behavior of your decision and the ramifications of your decision under stress in the worst case scenario, this being one of them. So he goes to draw his pistol and dude, he got a shot off in that draw stroke, which his hand was on there, which is probably about a three quarter second, uh, probably 0 0.6, 0 0.7 draw stroke. He broke a shot as his uh, arm was in a pitched or, or uh, retracted position and then he ducked I mean I never taught the method of ducking from bullets but what he's doing is reducing his overall signature what I like about this guy at the same time he's reducing his signature he's getting cover what we call relative cover it's cover that protects you from bullets but relatively speaking depending on the scenario could not he's a, he's behind a display case there's no barricades. There's no bulletproof anything. He just has adequate concealment and relative cover to be able to position himself. Now, the suspect who's retreating is shooting while he's retreating, breaking shots as he trips over his buddy. So he's down, and immediately he rolls up to a position where he could fight, and wow, he just took shots from an unknown position that he wasn't even paying attention to. One 
This is the most disappointing thing to see on the planet from human beings in this country. We have all the afforded opportunities to succeed, and we got young men throwing away their lives over what? Hookah smoke? A couple hundred dollars in cash in the register from sold hookah smoke? Like, what the hell are you doing? You're pissing away your life, about to take an innocent life over a botched robbery over a couple hundred dollars, guys. What the f are you thinking? So this guy pulls a gun point blank and wants to kill this guy, but he misses. He puts a round in the display case, which uh, this guy gets hit in the neck and the face with shrapnel from a bullet, potentially a bullet. Uh, he survives, but this is one of the reasons I don't advocate that you carry a subcompact or combat pistol besides the 365 XL, which I will advocate for because you can carry 12 to 15 rounds depending on the magazine that you have in the gun. I want a good amount of ammo. Why? This is the worst case scenario. Not the individual that tries to take your money or your life, but the group of them. Look at these kids. Watch these kids. Again, they push when it should be a pull. They're on top of each other in an active gunfight trying to shoot at this innocent security guard who just wants to go to work at the smoke shop, get his free smoke on the side, which is a perk of, uh, an incentive of a smoke shop, and get his minimum wage. And these guys are in an active gunfight in the, in the middle of downtown LA. Almost shoots that, his buddy in the back of the head and the whole thing uh, happens in a matter of seconds. Guys, so here's what takes place. Thanks to Carrie Trainer. Big shout out to Carrie Trainer. Here's what takes place. I'll give you the read down. On April 3rd, 2022, at 6 54 p.m., 7 p.m. That's like dinner time for me. I'm nearly in bed. I'm bathing my kids. I'm nearly in bed. Um, Khalil Malik Lundy, 23 years old, and Keith Terion Rochelle, 21 years old. Children. I was a sergeant in the infantry at the age of 20, and these kids are gangbanging in LA pissing away their lives. The two other individuals entered the smoke shop located at the 1500 block of South Wilmington Avenue in Compton. The four This is LA County, I believe, not, not LA, Los Angeles City, but Compton. The four individuals attempted to commit an armed robbery of the store and pointed their handguns at the employee. The employee and an armed security guard for the business withdrew his handgun and a gun battle between the armed men ensued. The suspects left the smoke shop and fled the scene. The employee sustained gunshot wounds to his face and neck later released from the hospital about 30 minutes after the botched robbery. Deputies responded to a Martin Luther King hospital regarding... How do you think Martin Luther King would feel all about this? Regarding a gunshot victim, investigators discovered the gunshot victim was one of the smoke shop robbers whom the store employee had shot. The ses second suspect was apprehended by the L.A. Sheriff's Department the following day, April 4th. Khalil Lundy and Keith Rochelle were identified as participating in the robbery and are currently at large wanted for murder. In another case, any information, contact L.A. Uh, County Sheriff's Department, Homicide Bureau at 323-890-5500. Because if you have any information, as this drops and releases, please let somebody know. God, the state of affairs in this country with this. And this is not like, oh, Mike, you're perpetuating a, a false narrative because this doesn't happen all the time. Check your own statistics in your own backyard and tell me it doesn't. Uh, there are a lot of security things they could have did better. I'm not going to go that into these details. Check out Mike Glover Actual where I talk about those details. Guys, PhilCraftSurvival.com. PhilCraft Survival as a podcast. PhilCraft Survival, the YouTube channel. Get as much free content from us as possible to get better situational awareness and understand how self-protection actually works. God, this bums me the hell out, man. Until next time, peace out. Leave your comments, hit notification tab, and make sure you subscribe. Peace out, man.